very warm good evening to one and all. Welcome to Anubhava, the free webinar series organized by Ayurveda Map, sponsored by Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda Pharmacy. Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda Pharmacy has been a part of its mother concern, Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda and Modern Hospital, since 1965. KAP manufactures around 400 classical products and 40 proprietary medicines in their GMP and ISO certified production unit. They develop our ancient formulations into proprietary medicines after a series of tests and research studies conducted in their R&D department and modernized medical laboratory. Ayurveda Map had started its activities in 2016 and was officially inaugurated by respected Dr. P.M. Varya Sir in 2017. We had started with in-hand practical sessions on Marmayu, that is intense training on application of Marma, Marma Banda, Varnyam on Cosmetology, Medi Sujok, Agneyam, Vistara. And due to the pandemic situation with warm responses from our participants, we had shifted from in-hand practical sessions to online sessions, starting with Varnyam, which was an online practical session on Ayurveda cosmetic therapies. Prajaga is an online certificate course on Ayurveda dermatology. Gala on the Ayurveda management of thyroid diseases. Prayana, Kriti, Yana, Nayana, Vipha, Ushya, Medas, Chipra, Eksha, Chara. Also, we had started Swathyaya. It was an exam-oriented tuition for Ayurveda UGs and PGs to support the students academically during the pandemics. We had provided recorded classes, detailed notes, one-to-one -one doubt clearance, question paper and research article discussions. Our ongoing sessions are, now we have postgraduate diploma in Ayurveda nutrition, including the uh, concepts of nutrition, women health and nutrition, geriatric nutrition, clinical nutrition, sports nutrition, how to prescribe diet and giving diet counseling, food and drug interactions, introduction to emerging concepts such as nutrigenomics, nutrigenetics, and how to design a food supplement, also food hygiene practices. It's designing recipes using Ayurveda concepts and ending with yoga and meditation related to nutrition. The registration is still going on. You may contact Dr. Jasul 944-77-800-184 for more details. Our upcoming session is Abha. It is an advanced online Ayurveda product making session with clinical application. It is organized by Ayurveda Map. So it is about to start in September. So uh, you, you may also contact Dr. Jasul for more details. Today we are on the Anubhava free webinar series. And the topic of discussion is diagnosis and management of ear diseases. For that, we have Dr. Sri Kumar K. He's the associate professor in the Department of Shalakya Tantra at Government Ayurveda College, Trivandrum. So has done his PG from uh, UG from Government Ayurveda College, Triponitra, and PG and PhD from Gujarat Ayurveda University, Jamnagar. He has 12 years of teaching experience. He is the recipient of National Ayurveda Scholar Award in 2011 and also the recipient of Nagarjuna Research Foundation Award. So we are honored to have you here, sir. I welcome Dr. Sri Kumar, sir, to present his topic. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shehnas. So, so please allow me to share the screen. Oh, okay, sir. I think now it's visible. Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you for giving me an opportunity to share a few clinical examinations as well as the clinical conditions, which is going to be discussed today evening. So welcome one and all. Uh, so this, please consider this session as an interactive session and you can uh, raise any questions or any uh, clarification of the treatment that I am going to discuss here. So before going to the, the conditions which is most commonly 
presenting in the opd are going to be discussed here i and i am not going to the details of the uh, rare conditions uh, uh, today so before going to the diagnosis uh, everyone know that the diagnosis the first part of the diagnosis is the examination so first i would like to share few uh, points regarding the examination of ear and we will deal with the main conditions uh, related to the ear presenting in the opd so as we know just before, if a patient is coming to the opd then we have to do the examination first that means ear is appearing as a hole from outside so what is going inside that we don't know and by the patient's clinical presentations only we have to make some uh, diagnosis and uh, for clarifications and confirmation of the diagnosis it will take time but the many of the conditions are presented with pain in the ear so there is uh, no time to think a lot but we have to act as early as possible so just we have to identify what is the cause of the pain so first of all we have to see what is going outside the ear and what is going inside the ear by seeing the outer part of the ear then we can interpret something which is going inside also so this is the main main part of the ear the main part that we have to focus on the clinics is the tragus so you can see some a peculiar corner of the ear so this if this corner is disturbed that is mainly occurring in case of some insect bite or some sort of uh, skin diseases especially in psoriasis or uh, uh, seborrheic dermatitis or even in dandruff also we can see from outside itself there will be the clear corner as well as the appearance of the ear canal will be changed and here uh, when we are uh, dealing with the ear diseases as we know there are three part of the ear external middle and inner ear so if a patient is coming and presenting with an ear pain the inner ear can, uh, is nothing to do with the pain that means inner ear will never cause pain so the pain is only occurring from outside that means the external ear and the middle ear and if a patient is coming with a uh, vertigo then it is definitely and in we can conclude that 90 percentage of the cause of vertigo will be the inner ear but the inner ear will never cause pain so the differential diagnosis of the pain which need the examination of the external ear as well as the middle ear okay so in the examination part that means the instrument that means everyone will be aware of that instrument this is an uh, otoscope so by examining the uh, from outside the ear then we can see by the torchlight we can see if there is something impacted in the external canal but we cannot see the details of the tympanic membrane for that we need an otoscope so if we are dealing with the ear cases then the otoscope is a must in the opd uh, because uh, something that means the any ant like small objects which is impacted near to the tympanic membrane we are going to uh, miss uh, when the patient is presented with an ear pain so the uh, otoscopic examination is an essential part to examine the external ear that means the outer part of the tympanic membrane and the tympanic membrane and which will cover the some conditions of the middle layer also so uh, these are the few facts regarding the examination of the ear i will uh, i would like to point out few facts that means uh, inspect the pinna and inspect the mastoid mastoid is the posterior part of the ear uh, that means the uh, projection uh, from the temporal bone and the palpation of that part will cause pain in case of mastoiditis and uh, the otoscopic examination that means the inspection of the pinna mastoid and otoscopic examination are the main part to be examined when a patient is coming with an ear pain so you can see this is a particular type of ear uh, which is termed as uh, cauliflower ear and which is occurring due to some it may be some congenital anomaly or it may occur due to the lack or the uh, disappearance of the normal contour of the ear which is occurring mainly due to the edema and you can see there is a some sort of ulcer here so actually this types of uh, pinched out ulcer this type of ulcer is highly suspicious of squamous cell carcinoma so a mere ulcer which is not healing for a long duration may arise the suspicion of squamous cell carcinoma and if we are directing the patient to, uh, to an immediate care then that will be more effective 
for a confirmation as well as the betterment of the patient. And here also you can see it's only a small ulcer, but this ulcer is going to damage the patient as well as his life if you are not diagnosed it properly. And this is the condition that we have discussed. This is the chronic mastoiditis. That means the posterior part of the ear is having swelling. This swelling on simple touch, it will go into create a severe pain in the ear. And this is a mastoiditis and it is very commonly occurring in children. And this is associated with a chronic ear discharge. And here also when the appearance of the child, you can see the right ear, the right ear is projected out. This is termed as the bat ear. Bat ear is highly confirmed in the presence of mastoiditis in the ear. And this is the normal otoscopic examination. This is a simple otoscope. If we, can, we are keeping with us in the OPD, then we can examine a lot of uh, areas in the ear, especially the wax. That means it's a very commonly presenting condition in the ear. And uh, this is the fungus. We can see the whitish material which is deposited in the ear and the patient is having an intense itching. So this is highly a diagnostic feature of the automycosis. This, this, all these facts then can be easily diagnosed with the otoscopic examination and the tympanic membrane. So you can see this is a normal tympanic membrane. And when we are visualizing a normal tympanic membrane, there will be the handle of malice and the cone of light will be there in a healthy tympanic membrane. So you can see this is a right tympanic membrane and this is a left tympanic membrane and both having no problem and you can see the all parts that is the parts flaccida past tensa handle of malleus and the short process of incurs everything is visible and is a healthy one and you can see the various type of tympanic membrane perforation and if a patient is presenting with a history of ear discharge then we have to see where from where the discharge is coming. So the discharge can come from the external ear as well as the middle ear. But if it is a chronic one, then the high chance of middle ear infection. And if the middle ear is infected, then we can see a perforation in the middle ear. So by assessing the type and extent of the perforation, we can predict the outcome of the treatment. That means it is going to be healed immediately or it is it will take a long duration or it may leads to some complication. So when we are assessing the type of perforation, I am not going to the details of the perforation, but this one, I think you can see the cursor. So this one is a traumatic perforation. So if the traumatic perforation means the edges of the perforation will be torn out. But you can see in this, there is a clear cut round the margin perforation this is definitely occurs due to the middle ear infection so we can find out the uh, cause of the perforation also by seeing the uh, features of that perforation so this type though this is termed as the cholesteatoma i am not going to the details but this cholesteatoma is a highly suspicious of patient is going to a very danger condition and it should be cleared and the cholesterol should be removed as early as possible. Otherwise, the patient will have some problems which is spreading to the brain also. So uh, this the diagnosis can be confirmed by the uh, CT and MRI. So this picture, you can see the tympanic membrane corner is lost and it is bulged. So if you are seeing this type of tympanic membrane, it is going to uh, discharge within one or two days. So the patient will have intense pain. So the cause of this intense pain is the pressure is expect, uh, exerted by the middle ear content to the tympanic membrane. And we can see when the within next day itself, it will be cleared out and the pain will subside and we have to give the medicines just which is mentioned in the Vidhriti Chikilsa. And this is also the tympanic membrane is bulged out. And here you can see the tympanic membrane is turned inwards. That means there is a vacuum created in the middle ear. And this type of tympanic membrane, which is retracted, this retraction of the tympanic membrane is highly indicative of eustachian tube dysfunction. So this eustachian tube dysfunction sh should be managed as early as possible. Otherwise, it, the next stage, it will lead to the uh, cirrhosotitis media and the patient will have some uh, discharge 
uh, afterwards. And in this type of condition, when the tympanic membrane is retracted for a long duration, the common surgery which is performing in the modern science is the grommet insertion. So this grommet insertion is mainly indicated for erasion of the middle ear from outside through the external auditory meatus. And this is the appearance of an uh, grommet in the middle uh, external ear and in some cases if we are suspecting it as a foreign body then it will be in danger so this you can see there is a grommet means it is a hole that means hole which is connecting the external ear to the middle ear and never confuse this with an external uh, means ear foreign body and don't try to pull it out because this is a medical management of chronic eustachian tube block so this is a tympanic sclerosis. That means in some old, uh, old age patients, the thickening of the tympanic membrane, which is termed as the uh, uh, tympanosclerosis, and which it is not going to create more problems, but the patient will have some sort of conductive hearing loss. So this is appearance of the cholesteatoma. Cholesteatoma means it is occurring in the pars tensa, not in the pars flaccida. That means the upper part of the tympanic membrane will have the perforation. Okay, this is a perfect, uh, 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 th these are the fluid in the middle ear. So the fluid in the middle ear, if we are uh, examining the patient uh, with otoscope and we are seeing the fluid or air in the middle ear, then which is highly indicative of serous otitis media, which is very common in uh, children and which is occurs due to the nasopharyngeal uh, inflammations and uh, due to the blowing of the uh, nose forcefully that uh, infection will be pushed to the middle ear and it will start creating problems as a starting of the middle ear infection the glue ear or the serous otitis media will start okay if, if you are uh, uh, want to take the x-ray of the ear then the only one view which is a shallow view is available and this view is visible uh, and uh, help for assessing the mastoid process that is mainly assessing the mastoid air cells that means the mastoiditis or the sclerotic mastoid will be diagnosed by the x-ray and uh, no other part is no, highly uh, indicative of x-ray examination just like that of nose the ear the part which is the mastoid is the only part which is exposed to x-ray for the confirmation of the diagnosis okay so uh, hearing assessment. I am not going to the details of the hearing assessment. These are the various type of uh, assessment. That is the impedance audiometry. This impedance audiometry will help to assess the condition of the middle ear by doing some particular type of audiometry to the external ear. Okay. So now I think I have just covered within a short period of time, I have just uh, covered the uh, brief examination of the ear and now we are going moving to the common disease of the ear. That means first is the pain in the ear, that is the Karnashula, then discharge from the ear, that is Karnasrava, then sound in the ear, Karnanada, hearing loss, Badhiriya, ear wax, Karnagudha, itching of the ear, that is the Karnakandu and the foreign body ear, that is the Karnagadashalya. So these are the main uh, pathological conditions which is uh, regularly attending in our OPD. So first and the most commonly uh, presentation in the ear OPD is the pain in the ear. So when we are dealing the pain in the ear, we have to find out the cause. That means the pain in the ear is only a symptom. So this is a symptom of the underlying cause. So we have to find out the cause. So just we have to assess whether it is an, a primary otalgia or a referred otalgia. So here the referred otalgia is nothing to do with the ear because the pain, the source, the um, source of the pain is not in the ear. So the otalgia may present the pathology of the ear or without any problems in the ear also the patient can present with the otalgia. So a lot of uh, risk factors are present to develop the pain in the ear. That is mainly the insertion of the sharp or unclean particles to the ear. That means maybe due to the uh, habit of uh, cleaning the ear with the uh, uh, unclean uh, earbuds or maybe due to the installation of the contaminated solution. I mean, that means if the patient is having some sort of pain, the patient will uh, instill some uh, solutions to the ear, then it will invite some infections and swimming in the polluted water it is a very common presentation that means the patients which is exposed to the uh, 
polluted water either by swimming or maybe due to some other exposure to the rain or like that that may also lead to the uh, pain in the ear and recent upper respiratory tract infection so all these are the history we have to find out the uh, cause from the history of the patient uh, itself so recent upper respiratory tract. so if a patient is presenting with an ear pain don't forget to ask about the respiratory infection as we have discussed the respiratory infections mainly the nasopharynx infection that will leads to the middle ear infection through the eustachian tube and the next the eustachian tube dysfunction it is one of the most common presentation uh, which is associated with the upper respiratory tract infection and lot of allergy so if a patient is presenting with the respiratory tract infection and eustachian tube dysfunction the main part of of the ayurveda or the treatment that we are as, uh, advising in the opd is the gandusha so in many diseases ajari itself clearly mentioned that gandusha is a main part of the uh, treatment for ear diseases so we have to interpret it as the gandusha or kabala which is highly effective to reduce the uh, nasopharynx as well as the oropharynx infection and it will open up the uh, obstructed eustachian tube that means the continuous movement of the palatin muscles that will forcefully uh, pull the eustachian tube and it will help to open the eustachian tube and if the eustachian tube is opened then the chance of middle ear infection is very rare and i am not going to the uh, minute details of the otalgia we have to identify from where the pain is coming either it from the uh, external ear or it from the middle ear so the external ear means the uh, from the pinna up to the tympanic membrane it can happen that means uh, that we have uh, means discussed earlier that is lacerations or any severe simple bite in the uh, pinna or the common other factor is the uh, hair follicle infection the hair follicle infection that is the uh, furangulosis uh, which is also causing very severe pain and uh, the pericondritis, the pericondritis is the inflammation of the external ear. That may be due to the earring inflammation. It is very common in uh, school going children and uh, ladies. That means the infection of the earring. That will also cause the pericondritis. So the main fact that is any type of injury or any type of hair follicle infection or uh, some uh, sort of uh, 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 ring uh, means uh, ornament. Uh, infection that means uh, some uh, contact dermatitis and the uh, wax also that will go into create the uh, otalgia and in external auditory canal though here it comes the impacted wax the foreign body for angulosis herpes oster and uh, all other uh, features like the keratotis uh, obturance that means the excessive shedding of the skin that also will go into create the uh, skin most sensitive and it will cause the pain so the main fact that we have to examine that the otalgia the cause of the otalgia which is lying in the uh, pinna or in the external auditory meatus and the external auditory meatus is the most common fact is the impacted wax foreign body and furangulosis and uh, it is very easy to identify whether the cause is lying in the external layer or in the middle layer. So if the cause is in the external layer, then the tracker sign will be positive. So uh, in the uh, previous slide that we have seen the anatomical part of tragus. If you are pushing the tragus, the patient will have a severe pain. That means the tenderness will be present. The, from the expression of the patient itself, we can identify the patient is having very severe pain. So this tragus sign positive means the cause is definitely lying in the external auditory meatus. So the middle ear also will create the uh, pain that is mainly the otitis media no other cause is very commonly presenting in the opd but the otitis media it may be of uh, bacterial origin or it may be of serous otitis media it will cause the pain and the mastoid also will create pain that is the mastoiditis and the mastoid abscess so these are the main causes which is lying uh, in the ear for causing the pain that means the causes of Pinna, external auditory meatus, and middle ear will cause pain, and the inner ear will never cause pain. So don't think about the inner ear infection when we are patient is presented with the 
ear pain and the referred otology it is very relevant when a patient is coming in the opd of uh, uh, age 24 because that cause is the impacted wisdom teeth so by uh, examining the ear if we are not finding any cause that means the pinna external auditory meatus and the middle ear if it is clear there is no tracker sign positive then we have to search for the referred otalgia so the referred otalgia is mainly uh, occurring through the 5 7 9 10 that means 5 that the trigeminal 7 the facial 9 the glossopharyngeal 10 the vagus and the c1 c2 that is the cervical sympathetic nerves so, so these are the causes which is causing the uh, root which causing the referred otalgia the common fact is the impacted wisdom teeth so if a patient at the, around the age of 24 that means that we have to rule out this third molar impaction and the oral cavity infection so the patient is having mouth ulcer that means the uh, tongue ulcer or the buccal cavity ulcer then it will definitely lead to ear pain through the trigeminal or through the glossopharyngeal then some sort of oral cancer so we have to find out the cause because in some cases and in my uh, experience i am sharing one fact that if patient presented with uh, uh, otalgia and uh, by searching we find out the patient is having the vocal cord cancer so the vocal cord cancer which is identified by in the early form then the first stage if you are going to identify diagnose it then the patient will not go into in a critical condition and we can easily save the patients without causing any damage to the vocal cord so these are some sort of excellent diagnostic criteria if a patient is presenting with a referred otalgia so uh, just if a child is presenting with the uh, otalgia and there is no uh, cause in the ear then the definitely we have to think about the tonsillitis so if the child is taking the medicine for tonsillitis and the child is crying during the night so the ear pain will definitely aggravate during the night so if the pain is aggravating during the night then it is definitely due to the middle ear infection and uh, maybe due to the referred otalgia mainly occurring which is from the tonsillitis or from the uh, glossopharyngeal uh, nerve uh, root that means the oral ulcer so these are the facts regarding the referred otalgia and how we are going to manage it it is important so in ayurveda it is all the types so susruta mentioned two types of karnashula one is the sodandra karnashula and another is the avarna janisha karnashula in the sodandra karnashula itself ajarya mentioned that hanu karna shiro grivam esse bhinna nivanilah karodi karnayo shulam so hanu karna shiro grivam that means it is a referred otalgia so which is ajarya susruta mentioned it in the vadavyadi chikitsa and in the shalakya tantra chikitsa ajarya mentioned it is an avarna janya Shirashula, uh, sorry, Karnashula. So in the uh, Karnashula, if the patient is presenting with the referred otalgia or due to the local causes, then we can manage according to the principles which is mentioned in the Ayurveda. So the main part, the Shula is definitely due to the Vada. So we have to do the management of the Vada. So the uh, if a patient is presenting with a simple Karnashula, just giving an external application of a dhanundaram and the hot fermentation it will relieve the condition and if the patient is having a chronic ear pain then we have to give the dashamula khritam internally and kshiradhuma kshiradhuma means balamula kashaya balamula kashaya that means the treatment which is adopted for the ardhita chikilsa that can be adopted here and the murdu sveda around there which is very much soothing to the patient that means patra potala sveda that means the sveda which is uh, mentioned in the kaya chikilsa that we can do with kalka here that means the uh, eranda Patra, Mula, Pindi. That means the uh, bolus made from that Eranda Patra Mula or from the Shigiru Patra be made into a Patra Potala and give leukoform fermentation after applying the, uh, the Dhanundaram. And Lebanam around the ear. If the patient is having an aggravation of the pain during the night, then as an emergency management, we can advise the Lebanam around the ear with the uh, Tilam, Devadaru, Shadaho and uh, the mentions medicines mentioned in the Ayurveda, but as an uh, 
ഒപിഡി പ്രാക്ടീസ് വി ക്യാൻ യൂസ് ദ കറുത്തവട്ട് രാസനാദിചൂർണം ദെൻ ദ കച്ചുരാദിചൂർണം ഓർ മർമ്മവട്ട് എനിത്തിങ് വിച്ച് ഈസ് മിക്സ്ഡ് ഇൻ ദ ധന്വന്തരം ആവർത്തി ആൻഡ് അപ്ലൈ അറൗണ്ട് ദ ഇയർ വിച്ച് ഈസ് വെരി മച്ച് സൂത്തനിങ് ടു ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഗീവ് റിലീഫ് instantly and the karnapurnam it is the next sort and if the whether the origin of pain is within the ear from the uh, referred pain we can advise the karnapurnam the karnapurnam we can use the either if it is nothing is available then we can do the karnapurnam with murivanna or the medicine which is specially mentioned for the karnashula is the deepika thailam and we can prepare the deepika thailam and we can go for the karnapurnam or eranda shigiradi thaila all these are advised for the karnapurnam and we can do the karnapurnam if the patient is having a chronic pain if it is a simple acute pain then manage with the lebana pindasveda and snehasveda and next condition is an impacted wax as we know it is a very common condition and uh, uh, it is very easily manageable also and the wax is uh, considered as a uh, the <coughs> foreign Uh, material which is collected it's actually it is not a foreign material it is the normal secretion of the seruminous glands and the uh, the skin parts which is added to the seruminous secretion will cause the uh, increased size of the wax so the patient which who is having an excessive dandruff may be presenting with the excessive accumulation of the wax so the wax uh, the patient if the patient is presenting with the pain then also we have to give the karnapurana so karnapurana definitely we are giving with kshaaradaila it is a very wonderful medicine so give the kshaaradaila uh, as karnapurana and it will definitely uh, liquefy the wax that means the dry most condition it will be dry and uh, as we know there is a means a numerous hair follicles are present uh, in the exploratory meatus and the wax will be embedded with the, the hair follicles so when we are moving the uh, means removing the wax the hair follicles should not be injured so for the easy removal of the wax from the hair roll follicles also we need a uh, liquefaction and for that we can use the uh, sharadaila and after giving the sharadaila just uh, make aware to the patient that uh, when we are applying the kshaaradaila the wax size will be increased so that will temporarily cause increase of blockage so tell the patient not to stop the medicine and come for the removal so just we can remove it with the jobs and sprob or suction or by the oral syringe so oral syringe is a simple procedure so just push with the oral syringe or if it is not available then take uh, about the 50 to 100 ml Uh, capacity uh, syringe and push to the uh, ear and that will definitely remove the wax if the patient is not allowing for a uh, instrumentation removal so the next condition is the furunculosis furunculosis means it is the hair follicle uh, inflammation so here also the the condition will be highly painful so the patient will not allow to touch Uh, the ear canal so that type of severe pain will be there so the if there is severe pain then the our strength is the lebana so just to treat it as an vidrati and we can do the management like that also so the vidrati uh, that will be if it is in the pakku avastha then it will be uh, spontaneously Uh, rupture and the content will be expelled out and the ama avastha then we can give the medicines for the absorption so uh, the condition uh, should be managed with the local application of the medicines so if the patient is having a severe pain then we can do the jatyadi uh, taila which is soaked in the cotton and uh retain there for a particular period of time then it will and when we are removing that area just to give a pressure that will evacuate the pus point so if a patient is having a recurrent furunculosis then diabetes should be ruled out so this management is exactly same as that of the stay management in the eye so just removing the hair root follicle then it will be spontaneously means evacuated 
so the management it's a dry mopping so local application with the jatyadi tailam or jatyadi kritam even though just we are mopping giving the mop and just giving a push it will evacuate that abscess then we can give the uh, murivanna for the local application and uh, if the patient is having a recurrent furangulosis then definitely the pitta involvement will be there so give the avipatti churna and the kashaya as the panchatiktakam amrutottaram or golichadi kashaya and the amrutha arishtam or nibbasa that can be given internally and if the child is presenting then give the rajanyadi churna as an immuno promotive uh, uh, medicine and for internally the kaishara gugulu or vettumaran that can be given as an assistance to reduce the pain and inflammation so uh, when a patient is presenting with the pain in the opd then the main part rise is the local causes or the referred causes the local causes either it may be commonly due to the wax or maybe due to the furangulosis so the next common presentation is a foreign body in the ear so the foreign body in the ear means uh, the usually we are observing the a uh, small type of flying or ants and in children the uh, some uh, the part of the uh, ornaments uh, will be there inside the ear or some green gram or like that the fruit seed also will be uh, pushing to the ear so the foreign body in there that can be divided into either living or non living so if it is living then there will be a very distress to the patient so if when we just uh, make and look with the otoscope and if it is live then make it dead by doing the karnapurana so in ayurveda also it is uh, mentioned that kide srodogade karne pure the levanambuna so levanambuna means just make the lukewarm uh, means boil the water and make it lukewarm and add salt and we can make the karnapurana that will definitely that will suffocate the uh, organism and the uh, foreign body that animate foreign body and then we can just go for the removal just like that of wax and if it is an inanimate foreign body then it will be hygroscopic or non hygroscopic the so hygroscopic means it will it should be removed as early as possible uh, otherwise that will uh, uh, absorb the water and it will increase in the size and it will be locked in the external canal so for that we have to put one or two drops of glycerin and just remove so the foreign body in the ear that should be removed definitely and the removal in often uh, animate foreign body and live foreign body that suffocate and remove and if it is hygroscopic remove as early as possible or put few drops of glycerin and remove it and in non animate foreign body then uh, non hygroscopy then we can go for a ear surgery so the ear surgery is a very good procedure which will uh, if the um, child uh, is uh, putting some sort of uh, mud inside the ear then it is very difficult to remove with the instrument so in that condition the uh, main uh, strength of removal is the oral syringe it will definitely remove all part and otherwise we can go for a suction so the all these are about the foreign body in the <clears throat> ear and the next common condition is the acute otitis media actually the it is otitis media this otitis media is of many uh, of two types that is cirrus otitis media and infective otitis media the cirrus otitis media means it is a non infective condition and it is usually happening as a result of the nasopharynx inflammation just like the discharge is coming through the nose that the same collection will be in the ear also but it is not in an infected condition so the child will be presenting with the pain and blockage so there will not be any discharge so if you are doing the treatment as early as possible it will be uh, relieved as uh, means uh, with a short period of time just give the treatment of the nasopharyngeal infection only and in acute otitis media it is having a severe pain and pus so that means it is acutely presenting so it is usually occurs in young children and due to the malfunctioning of the eustachian tube that we have uh, discussed earlier if the eustachian tube is blocked then if you are not 
uh, curing the condition, then that block will lead to the retraction of the tympanic membrane. This retraction is again leading to the exudation, and this exudation will go to the infection, and that will be infected. That is the acute otitis media. So the main presentation will be the pain, fullness, and discharge from the ear. So this is mentioned at the uh, this is the CSOM. So, so the CSOM means if the acute otitis media is not treated in time, then it will uh, be there for a long period. So it is going to a CSOM, chronic separative otitis media. So this chronic separative otitis media means it may or may not be presenting with the pain. So that means if the patient is having an acute exacerbation of chronic, then only there will be pain. Otherwise, the patient is always presenting with a foul smelling discharge and ear uh, that means uh, ear blockage that is hearing loss so uh, this csom if it is a long duration then we have to suspect the cholestitoma so uh, that we have already mentioned the cholestitoma is a very dangerous condition we have to confirm it by the ct scan or x-ray or by some uh, scanning method otherwise it will go to create more problem to the patient including the infection of inner ear so thus, uh, otitis media, especially the infective otitis media that include the acute and the chronic, both can be managed by first, according to the symptomatic. The symptomatic management is the best one. If the patient is presented with the pain, then go for the Patya Sharanga, Kashayam, Trifala, Gugulu, and Kaishara Gugulu. And if the patient is having eustachian tube dysfunction, so then go for the Gandusham. So this is the main part in all type of ear discharge we have to suspect the eustachian tube dysfunction and we have to give the gandusham. So in serous otitis media, we know that the only fluid collection, so we have to open it up as early as possible. So go for a tikshna gandusham, that is trifala, trigadu, and saindhavam should be added and give gandusha minimum four times per day. And then the nasya. Nasya can be marsha or pratimarsha. Actually, if the patient is having eustachian tube dysfunction, then pratimarsha nasya is uh, required. No need of marsha nasya. Then local application. So if the patient is having a discharge, then mopitap and jatyadi girda or villambachotyadi thaila can be applied and the jaluga. If it is a chronic one and uh, the once it is healed, then it is again occurring. That means it is going to a chronic phase. Then we have to plan for a Jalu Gavacharana and Karna Dubana. Karna Dubana means it is very effective for reducing the my uh, bacterial load as well as to reduce the uh, foul smelling. And internally, we can use the Amradotaram, then Panchatiktakam, then uh, Arthavilanka Shayam, then Avipati, Rajanyadi, then uh, Ashtajurnam, Nimbasavam, Kaishorugul. And that means the Pitta Rekta Hara Chikilsa, which can be given internally, as well as the medicines which is mentioned for the Dushtavrana, that also can be used for local as well as internally, including the Madhusnuhi Rasayana or Gandhaka Rasayana. So this is the procedure of Karna Dhubana. So the Dhubana, that means in uh, this type of conditions, we cannot instill the medicines to the ear because the chance of infection of the in, uh, middle ear will be more. So in that condition, to make the medicine available to the local area, the Karna Dhubana is the very effective treatment and it will readily reduce the infect bacterial load as well as the foul smell. So this is a condition you can see. This is an eczematous otitis externa. That means the child is or the uh, uh, patient is presenting with the excessive desquamation of the external auditory meatus. So just ask about the uh, dandruff. So definitely there will be a dandruff. Then it is just like treat like that of eczematous otitis externa. So there will be oozing and crusting in the ear canal will be there. So here also the crust should be removed. Otherwise, this crust will again add it with the wax and it will cause the blockage. So oral syringing, the oral syringing can be done with Aragodadi Kashaya. So the Aragodadi Kashaya uh, is uh, very effective for removing the uh, abnormal contents, 
especially the skin parts and the kushtahara chikilsa that means the medicine which is suitable for the skin that is the medicines mentioned in the kushta also can be done so here the external application of jatyadi tailam or jatyadi khritam can be done then karna dhubana and rakta mokshana so the uh, the treatment which is adopted for the kushta chikilsa can be given for a patient present with the skin disease and internally so as we know the aragoda mahatiktakam or padavaladi kritam or tiktakam kritam is very useful including the galuchadi avipatti and manipadra and if the patient is having a long standing dandruff and this eczematous otitis externa then we can think about the bakuchi and sa manipadra lehya or the um, uh, rasayana yoga mentioned in the kushta chikitsa so this is another type it is a seborrheic otitis externa here also actually the problem lies with the skin not with the ear proper so here also the main the uh, here the uh, you can see the red patches so here the pitta involvement will be more here here to uh, start with the rectum mokshana as early as possible including the tikta gridam and nitya virejanam so here we have to adopt the nitya virejanam and internal use of tikta gridam uh, nitya virejanam means just uh, the manipadra lehya or avipatti for continuous 15 days including the rectum mokshana that will readily uh, reduce the Uh, local inflammation and the kashaya that is trifala or khadira that is uh, khadira kataka kashaya that is khadira and kataka mixed and boil it and make a kashaya for the kshalana that we can use and for the external application so all these type of uh, presentations uh, presenting with the skin so the skin part means the external auditory meatus and the pinna so here the local piju that is karna piju is very much useful so we can use the tungadrimadi or tuvarakatailam or durvakritam or padolaadikritam or jatyaadikritam according to the dosha vishesham the next main problem is the automycosis so automycosis means it is a fungus in the external auditory meatus so the uh, ear is one and the only place where the maximum chance of uh, fungal infection is seen because the water entered to the ear will give a moisture and the heat provided by the canal will give a temperature so the moisture and the temperature it is a very favorable circumstances to grow or to promote the fungus so the ear is a main site of uh, fungal growth that is automycosis so here the fungus is usually growing in the external ear and the patient is present with an intense itching intense itching means the patient cannot tolerate that itching so in some cases there will be black discoloration so the fungus are of two types one is black that is aspergillus niger and other is white that is the candida albicans so both of that condition the patient is having intense itching so how we can manage this condition so first no doubt we have to remove the fungal mass the fungal mass should be removed either by syringing or the syringing that we can adopt the aragodadi uh, then the Uh, or by syringing uh, then uh, local suction and the pijuvarti and apply and remove it and the external color mopping is must uh, by the jobsens probe or by the oral syringing or by the suction then go for the pijuvarti so the pijuvarti by the surasadi gana or aragodadi gana or nirgundyadi anything that we can adopt we can convert the medicine the surasadi gana as the fanita aragodadi gana as fanita then we can apply locally and jatyadi krita that can also be given for the pijuvarti and the karna dhubanam with the haridra and gugulu mainly the krimihara property medicine that is the haridra gugulu vidanga uh, and hingu that can also be given for the karna dhubanam and internally we have to adopt the aragodadi kashayam panchatikta kashayam then uh, vidanga nirgundi hairidigi shundi musta kashayam all, all these are mentioned in the kushta yoga chikitsa that we can also adopt here and gugulu panchabalam churni is a wonderful medicine then rajanyadi krimikhnavadi and kaishwara gugulu that also we are uh, adopt uh, means advising in the uh, this uh, automycosis for a patient presenting with itching in the ear so the itching in the ear we have to rule out the presence of fungus and if it is not there that may be due to some allergy so in that condition also we can easily give the aragodadi kashayam and gugulu panchabalam including the rajanyadi 
so this is a application of pg worthy so make the worthy by soaking it in the suitable medicine the suitable medicine means it may be the surasadi gana fanida or aragodadi gana fanida then nirgundiyadi taila or murivanna or jatiyadi krita so if the patient is having eczematous or is externa then go for the jatiyadi and if the patient is having severe intense itching and after removing of fungal mass then go for the surasadi gana but the local application of uh, the medicine in the form of pichuvarti so Uh, we can adopt here so actually the varthi prayoga mentioned in ayurveda is as a part of shashti rupakrama so what is the use of varthi uh, in uh, shashti rupakrama that means it is the vrana shodhaka so the vrana shodhaka means here the ulcer so the local pathology will be removed so the retention of the medicine and after uh, absorbing the local pathology we can remove the varthi so that area will be cleaned mechanically as well as the medicinally we can give an instant relief to the patient after removal of the pichavarthi then we can go for a dry mopping so uh, these are the main part that the patient is suffering and uh, the next part i am just uh, covering few parts uh, which is related to here as we are talking about the ear then there is no meaning that if you are not mentioning the hearing loss as actually the hearing loss that may be of acute or chronic so the acute hearing loss may be or definitely that may be due to the middle ear infection that is the fluid in the middle ear so the patient according to the age also we have to see if a child is presenting with an acute hearing loss and pain then definitely there will be the middle ear we have to examine and if a old age patient is coming with a hearing loss that may be of chronic one then we have to identify which type of hearing loss that means sensory neural conductive and mixed so the conductive hearing loss especially occurs in the external ear as well as the middle ear pathology and the sensory neural is mainly due to the inner ear pathology so uh the Uh, if a patient is presented with a hearing loss then the treatment of the cause is the first one so in case of any type of pus which is present in the external or middle ear then we have to go for the ear toilet in the middle ear infection that we have already mentioned we can go for the padavaladi uh, manjishtadi guluchadi then gugulu panchavalan churnam rajanyadi churnam kaisharu gugulu tirfala gugulu and padavaladi grad all these are the medicines which should be uh, given to the patient according to the condition and in chronic case then the chronic case the treatment definitely uh, having the uh, managed like the dushtavrana those pakwe boye vahe garne dhuma gandusha davarana yujyat nali vidhanam cha dushtavrana haram chet that is the treatment principle mentioned by acharya so pakwe boye vahe that is a chronic pus foul smelling discharge then yujyat nali vidhanam that is nali vrana chikitsa and dushtavrana chikitsa and here also acharya mentioned dhuma gandusha dharanam that means the patient should be advised for gandusha so in any type of ear discharge and the eustachian to block then we should advise the gandusha so uh, the gugulu tiktakam kashayam gugulu panchavalam churnam then uh, nitya virejanam then talapodichil and daily cleaning with the local application of jatiyadigridam karna dhubanam and the leeching so if a condition is going for a chronic then we can adopt the leeching so the leeching means the rectum moksha if the condition which is of long standing then definitely there will be involvement of the recta so to remove the recta uh, from the local area leeching is very useful so we can adopt for the leeching also this is a uh, case where we have done the leeching in a chronic uh, otitis uh, media patient uh, which is presenting with the badhiriya and non healing uh, perforation and if it is a conductive hearing loss then we have to see what is the cause that is the treat the cause then if the foreign body and impacted vas remove it then balamula kashaya dhumam for uh, the uh, local application then nasyam and pratimarshanasya that can be given for if a eustachian tube dysfunction is there then dikshna gandusha also should be given means uh, irrespective of the cause that we can advise 
this type of treatment and the dhumapana and the talapodicha. So talapodicha means this conductive hearing loss mainly. Actually, as I mentioned, the body loss of two types, kafajam and vata kafajam. So if it is kafaja, then definitely we have to adopt the talapodichil or the shiro labor. And internally, Amrudotram, Punarnavadi, Indukantam, the Shamula Kadutram, Amradaristam, Punarnavasam, Tali Sadi, then Sudarshanam, Yoshadi, Kaisu will according to the condition. If it is associated with the respiratory infection, then adopt the Pradeshai Jikilsa. And if it is uh, having a local uh, edema or the middle ear in uh, fluid collection of serous fluid, then adopt the Shofa Jikilsa. Like that, we can uh, select the medicines. And in sensory neural hearing loss, the main part that means it's a chronic one and it's a degenerative condition then we have to adopt the local abhyanga and the pindasveda the pindasveda means it's a shastika pindasveda and analebana which is also advisable and here we have to adopt the marshana sea itself that is the air and the shigruadi and the tala with the kachuradi air and the shigruadi then shirothara that is bell that is the murtha dala is having a very great role here and the tala podichil badradarvadi means if the uh, there is an involvement of the uh, external ear also, then we can go for the Talapodichil. Otherwise, we can go for the Karnaburana directly. And if uh, the, it is not at all responding, then we can try for the Rectamokshana also. And internally, that, that means according to the Samanya Jigusati, Samanya Karnadogeshu, Kridapanam Rasayana. So the Krida should be given as a Rasayana purpose, that means the Rasna Dashamula Kridam, then Maharasnadi Kashayam, Patyashadanga Kashayam, the Shadaviryadi Kashayam, Ashogantha Churnam, Dhanandaram Avarti with the milk and yogra chugula. So that we also we can uh, adopt uh, as a supportive treatment for the sensory neural hearing loss. But definitely the Marshanasya, Karnaburana, Murtha Taila, and internal Rasayana is the treatment of choice. And I think we are moving to the last part of the presentation. So uh, here, the next main presentation in the OPD is the vertigo. As all we know, there are two causes of vertigo, that is peripheral and central. So this peripheral vertigo is the originating from the ear. As we have uh, discussed earlier, vertigo is occurs mainly, the 90 percentage of the vertigo occurs due to the inner ear and in some cases if you are uh, removing the wax from an external ear then the patient may also feel the vertigo but that vertigo is due to the hypo uh, tension that means the pressure is uh, going down because of the stimulation of the vagus nerve which is stimulate uh, which is supplied in the external auditory meatus as the as the uh, that's uh, Arnold's nerve. So if it is stimulated, the patient will have some feeling of vertigo that is due to that hypotension. But if there is a positional vertigo, then definitely it is due to uh, the uh, peripheral, that is a Meniere's disease, then vestibular neuronitis, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo and acoustic neuroma. Any type of this condition can be presented with the vertigo. And the central means the brainstem and the cerebellar structures, mainly the CP angle tumors also presenting with the central type of vertigo. So if a patient is coming to uh, our OPD with a vertigo, definitely we have to assess the inner ear. So the inner ear should be assessed by the audiometry. The audiometry means the specific type of test is mentioned in the audiometry like Tone DK and Berra, which is highly useful for uh, uh, locating the uh, cochlear and retrochochlear pathology, including that is that means that uh, Berra test, which is also very useful for identifying the uh, that is peripheral and differentiating the peripheral and the central cause of vertigo. And here, the BPP way is one of the most common presentation in the uh, OPD, especially in the speciality OPD, that is a sudden sensation of spinning, brief episodes of mild to intense dizziness, triggered by specific changes in heart position. That means that if the patient is uh, telling that uh, in the, uh, there is a severe vertigo in the early morning when they are rising from the bed, it is definitely, most probably it is definitely due to the BPPV and the loss of balance and associated with the nausea and vomiting, immediate consultation as with uh, fever, headache, uh, hearing loss, leg or arm weakness, loss of consciousness, numbness, then the patient will definitely coming to the rushing to the OPD as an emergency. So actually this vertigo is considered to be an emergency in the ENT OPD. So the etiology is the inner ear damage and we have to identify where the location of the pathology. 
So here, we, the management, the general manager, if the patient is having an intensive vertigo, the first uh, uh, treatment that we are adopting is the talam. So the various type of talam advised is very beneficial for uh, an acute presentation of the vertigo. And then we can go for the uh, management. So here the srodadushti will be the sangha and vimargagamina, most probably the avarana, that is the pittavrata vada condition that we are also um, uh, observing here and the confirmation by the upashya and anupashya that we can do. That means we, to which treatment it is. Actually the uh, brahma is due to reja pitta niral brahmaha. Reja pitta anilal brahma. So it may be due to the vada pitta in origin and in some conditions and it's a shirasthan um, shira is the uh, kafasthana there may be some association of vada is um, it's a kapha is also seed so we have to confirm it by the ubashi and anubashi so the internal medications chidvilladi hingvajadi then badradarvadi then vidhariyadi patyashanangam and dhanandaram avarti that we are usually prescribing in this type of conditions and definitely it should be combined with the various type of neck and head exercises for the complete remission of the condition. So uh, the, this is a symptomatic condition. So that some patients are coming with a perforated tympanic membrane. So it means the uh, doctor usually in ENT advising the surgery. And if the patient is advising for Ayurvedic treatment, so what may be the cause? The cause is mainly uh, due to the loud sounds or foreign body, head trauma, middle ear infection, rapid pressure changes, anything that can be leads to the perforated tympanic membrane. So here you see this is traumatic perforation and we have already discussed the traumatic perforation have will be uh, diagnosed by the appearance of the rupture that means the irregular margin so in this type of perforation if it is uh, either due to the infective or due to traumatic then the traumatic condition that is uh, it is will be healed very easily but it is the as a part of middle ear infection it will take time so the condition that is the ear canal if there is a, uh, infected with any pus then we have to clean it then go for the google the main treatment that we are advising in the opd are the google panchavalam indukantam kashayam lekusuta shekhara resam kaishara gugulu trifala gugulu and we have to prevent the infection so if you are doing the treatment for a chronic perforation and if it is getting a, then a recurrent infection then the that will not be healed so we have to prevent the infection by respiratory uh, tract medications and prohibit uh, the patient should not be allowed to go uh, means for the nasal blow and ear drops and it will be healed within three to four weeks if the traumatic perforation is there then it will be healed within three to four weeks but we cannot expect this type of sudden healing in a chronic middle ear infection so in middle ear infection that's so the condition uh, of a tympanic, that the tympanic membrane perforation associated with the middle ear infection will be managed by the dushta just consider this is as a dushta vrana chikilsa and it should be combined with the srodo shodhaka then uh, the uh, gandusha and rasayana chikilsa and dushta vrana chikilsa then we can manage the condition that is padola di manjishta di gugulu panchabalam then chobachini kashayam arupada mahatiktam kashayam gugulu tiktakam gugulu vedam gugulu preparation is very useful in this condition and uh, the karna dhubanam. So the karna dhubanam that will allow to expose the middle ear also with the medicines that we are using for the dhubana. So I am uh, concluding the treatment. So the uh, 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 the uh, conditions, whatever may be the conditions that may be the inner ear uh, or the vertigo or the badiria or any type of nerve damage that should be managed with the murtha daila. So the talam, uh, how we can identify where, when to start the murtha daila or not. So that for that we have to go for an uh, upashya and upashya. That means kachuryadi and ekshira. Just to go for a talam with the kachuryadi and ekshira bela. So if it, the patient is getting worsening of the condition, then the murtha daila should not be done as soon as possible. So we have to wait. And the vamana, in the conditions of... Uh, uh, the Badiria also, Vamana is suggested in that condition. Go for the Uddhartana, Tikshanasya, Vamana, and Shiroleva instead of Murthadaila. And if the patient is getting good relief, then go for a uh, Snehapana and Murthadaila. 
so i am uh, winding up the presentation so i would like to convey uh, the four points uh, why we are dealing with an ear case first the careful examination so the presentation that we have started with the examination we have to do the examination very carefully otherwise that examination itself will aggravate the pain or push the uh, uh, impact of foreign body to the uh, that uh, deeper areas and the importance of uh, snana actually if the patient is having an ear infection then ajaria also advised not to go for a shirasnana so that definitely if there is a middle ear infection then advise the patient not to take the snana and the pathyapathya is also very important and the special yogas that a lot of yogas that we have discussed here so just use it according to the dosha and dusha involvement and the condition of the uh, vrana it is an uh, shofa that means ama vrana pachimana vrana or pakko vrana or dushta vrana so all these types of vrana chikitsa is highly uh, advisable in the management of karna yoga so thank you and once again uh, uh, thank you uh, for the organizers for giving me your opportunity to speak few uh, points regarding the karna yoga management and chikitsa thank you thank you so much sir it was a very clear session you detailedly examined uh, explained each one of the examination and also the conditions uh so before moving on to the discussion i would like to invite dr muhammad yasi the factory in charge of dr p alikutti scotical ayurveda pharmacy over to you sir okay uh, good evening to all uh, myself dr muhammad yasi on behalf of dr p alikutti scotical ayurveda pharmacy first of all i uh, use this Uh, opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Sri Umar regarding that presentation, a good presentation. Especially Karna Yoga, sir, uh, we get a little, uh, very minute chances for getting uh, a clinical experience regarding the, uh, the Yoga. A good session, uh, we get a good session. We doctors, uh, we, our practitioners are getting good discussion or good session. regarding the clinical experience sir once again thank you for the good sessions for us and dr p alikutti scotical ayurveda pharmacy is manufacturing all major classical formulation and also we are manufacturing around 50 proprietary medicine the organization is uh, functioning from 1965 onwards Uh, on and around the uh, india and especially in kerala throughout the kerala lot of doctors are using our man, uh, our medicine and i also expecting uh, the doctors discussing uh, this session will uh, have the requirement and also having the specific uh, requirement regarding the medicine some of the doctors have a specific requirement regarding the medicine so uh, you will uh, uh, kindly uh, introduce uh, to uh, regarding the means uh, this ayurveda regarding any type of medicine or formulation anything uh, we are planning that having difficulty to formulation for the treatment we will uh, give uh regarding, uh regarding the uh, combination also okay thank you and also we have uh vasti yandra means uh, glycerin cell neha vasti and also kashaya vasti equipments also we have so kindly uh, cooperate with us okay thank you thank you dr yasi uh shri kumar sir can we move on to the discussion yes yes definitely So we would request, we would like to request you to please switch on your video for the discussion session. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, before starting the session, we had a uh, got a question. 
I made just a brief report also. Uh, so I would like to ask that first. This was a case of a 24 year old girl. Uh, this is a recent case. Today only she came to the OPD. She's having a normal appetite, but uh, a little bit more. And uh, she, she was complaining of this vomiting and vertigo since two days. And her bowel is normal. Pallor is always present. There is no history of pain or trauma. But there is a history of oiling her head before going to bed. With the oil, she sleeps on. So these were the reports. In the report, it is told minimal hearing loss for, of both the years, rising pattern. And this was the treatment given. Okay, so uh, I think she presented with the vertigo. Yes, sir. Okay, so they have managed with uh, that beta histine. That is 16 mg means it is the beta histine, uh, which is usually uh, advising uh, in uh, modern science for the treatment of vertigo. But uh, you mentioned that appetite is more. So uh, why you have mentioned like that? I somewhat died. Uh, yes, sir. So she she told that uh, although her appetite is normal, uh, she she is more uh, having food cravings, and uh, at the evening her vomiting also starts. She eats full full to her stomach, and then in the evening vomiting started. Okay, so here I think uh, we have to definitely rule out the thyroid. Have they have gone for the thyroid test? Uh, that we don't know, sir. Just today only she came to the OPD. More, more history is not known. Okay, okay. So here means as we have discussed, if a patient is presenting with the, the uh, vertigo, first we have to go for the thalam, no doubt. So which dosha should be considered first? So I think here the vata pitta, that means the uh, appetite is also very uh, high in nature and uh, the pragrati, that means the age, uh, I think uh, it is also of uh, pitta in uh, uh, nature. So we have to manage with the vata pitta uh, origin. So first we have to, the main vata pitta vitiation in the body, which is happening mainly due to the hyperthyroidism. So here we have to rule out the hyperthyroidism and here the patient is also having some anemic also. So uh, first manage or first start with the talam, especially with the the Kachuradi and Shirebala. So this is the first line of management. So if the patient is responding very positively to that, then we are near to the diagnosis. Then we can go for the Kshira Kashaya. So that is a Dashamula Kshira Kashaya internally. So I think we can plan just like in the Vata Pitta vitiated condition. So for that, we have to confirm the blood test and then we can go for the final uh, prescription. Okay, sir, is there any relevance of her history of oiling her head before going to bed? Actually, that is a habit, means I don't know the history. If she's having the, this habit from childhood onwards. No, then... no, just when she started this only, after that only this complaint had started. Okay, okay. So for that, it means actually this is not recommended in Ayurveda uh, because uh, this uh, full oiling of the head uh, uh, means actually uh, this is mentioned in the uh, Shiro Yoga Dhigara, that is uh, uh, she, uh, uh, Thailam uh, application or uh, uh, the Khrida application in the Shira is mentioned is some sort of particular type of headache only. Actually, it is not clearly mentioned in the Karna Yoga. So uh, that may be the reason, but we cannot predict uh, or we cannot uh, point out that it is will be the reason for that we should advise the patient to stop that habit for a period of five days and this we have to see what is happening so this type of uh, this oil application that will create some um, sort of uh, kapha vitiation there that so the patient if the patient is having more uh, problems during the early morning that may be the reason so if the patient is having a very constant vertigo then the, this will not be a cause okay thank you so so there are questions in the question answer uh, part. Uh, shall I read out it for you? Yes, yes, definitely. And so the first question is, Karna Dhubana can be done with which herbs? Sir? Which herbs can be used for Karna Dhubana? 
Actually, the Karna Dubana is a very potent medicine which is mentioned in the Karna Yoga Jigilsa. So, uh, in the automycosis or in the foul smelling discharge or chronic otitis media, just like it is mentioned in the Vrana Dubana in the Vrana Avastha. So, in to by which the medicine should be what medicine should be used that means it will depend upon the pathology so this is a dubana procedure is a method of drug delivery so what uh, what should be the drug used for that uh, delivery that is depending upon the condition for example if it is a foul smelling discharge and uh, uh, fungus then fungus is usually causing the foul smelling discharge so that condition we are uh, using the guggulu Nimbabatram, Vidangam and Haridra, which is usually uh, advising for the Karna Dubanam. And if uh, the uh, only the Karna Dubanam with the Google also that we are prescribing. And in some cases, the uh, Sarshabam is also used for the Karna Dubanam. So I think the condition that means the pathology should be addressed. This is only a drug delivery system. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, will medicines be useful in age-related hearing loss above 70 years of age or should hearing aid be advised? Actually, this uh, uh, hearing problem should be addressed uh, by the, the problems of the patient with that hearing loss. So if an old age 70-year-old patient is not uh, hearing, that is uh, the uh, amount of hearing loss is a very crucial factor. So if the patient is having above 90 decibel loss, then it is above 70 age, we cannot do anything. It is better to advise the hearing aid itself. And if some patients are having the hearing loss, that is minimum hearing loss, around 50 to 60 decibel loss. And if you are advising that hearing aid in that age, that will create more tinnitus. So that will be more problematic to that patient. So if it is a moderate hearing loss, then we can st uh, start the treatment. As we have uh, explained earlier, the Rasayana Chigilsa should be advised along with the, the Murtha Daila and Nasya. So just to go for a one course of treatment along with that is the Dashamula Kshira that also can be given in that age. But the 70 year that may be uh, associated with uh, some other comorbidities like diabetes, uh, hypertension or hypercholesteremia like that also will be uh, accompanying that condition. So by assessing all the comor comorbidities and the amount of hearing loss, then only we can predict the means we can suggest to use the uh, the hearing aid or not. So and in some cases, if it is a very profound hearing loss, then hearing aid will be advisable. Okay, thank you, sir. So the next question is autosclerosis in pregnancy. How to manage it through Ayurveda? Actually, autosclerosis in pregnancy, that means we can wait. Uh, means uh, up to the delivery. I think it is not recommended. That means in some sort of hormonal changes also will go into create the adhesion of the uh, that uh, or, um, step is foot plate to the oval window. So this addition that may be due to some hormonal change also. That means uh, I think don't go for a treatment during the pregnancy period itself and wait for to complete the pregnancy and after delivery, then we have to confirm it and in that condition, we have to uh, suggest the scan also to confirm the diagnosis. And if it is of uh, autosclerosis, then the line of management is the Vata Kapha Shamana. So usually we are advising the Nasya and internal use of medicines, which is of Vata Kapha Shamana. That means some sort of Ryukshana treatment that we have to give. So in the case of a pregnancy, I think the treatment, the both the treatments are not advisable. So I think it is better to wait uh, to complete the pregnancy. Okay. Uh, sir, is cholesteatoma can be managed with Ayurveda medications or should be preferred? Actually, the cholestitoma, uh, that is a dangerous condition. That means it can be uh, make the patient uh, unconscious also. So the extent of the cholestitoma is very important. So the cholestitoma usually starts as the retraction of the pars flaccida. That condition, there will be accumulation of the 
uh, that is stratified epithelium only will be there. In that condition, we can manage easily. But if it is extremely extended to the inner ear or to the tegment tympani, tegment tympani is a th very thin plate that is a separation between the uh, middle cranial fossa and the middle ear. If it is eroded, then we cannot wait that that immediate surgery should be done. Otherwise, the patient will be lost. Uh, his life. That is an, it is an emergency. So before advising a treatment for cholesteatoma, definitely we should advise for a uh, uh, scanning and have to find out the extent of the cholesteatoma, then only start with the treatment. Okay. Thank you, sir. So the next question is, please brief the management of Meniere's disease and how is the prognosis of the disease? Actually, in our OPD and IPD, we are managing the Meniere's disease. So the Meniere's disease it is an acute uh, presentation of uh, hearing loss, vertigo, and tinnitus. So here, actually, this is an emergency. The patient will rush to the uh, allopathy OPD, and they are usually giving the, uh, that is, diamox and uh, the beta histin and they, it will be managed. But the problem is that it is a fluctuating hearing loss. So the patient will have this... Uh, exacerbation at many times. In that uh, uh, circumstances, the patient is coming to the Ayurveda. So here we are adopting uh, uh, and uh, using the uh, Vata Pitta line of management. But the Vata Pitta line of management is Rasayana and Brahmana, but we have to give consideration to the Kapha. So the initially the Lenkhana Chigilsa which is followed by the Rasayana Chikusa is the line of approach. For that, uh, many of the conditions in the Vadika Shirashula that we can see the symptoms like uh, Khurna Diva Shara, uh, Shira Sarvi, there is vertigo, there is Vadide Sonadaha Srotre, there is tinnitus. And like that, the, means all the features are present in the Vadika Karma Shula also. So Vadika Shirashula also. So in the Vadika Shirashula, the line of management which is adopted is the Murtha Taila is the best one. So here, we have to start the Takradhara first and the Shiro Lepana first. So the Lenkana Chigilsa first, that is the Takradhara, then uh, uh, the uh, Shiro Lepana, uh, which should be continued with the Nasya, first the Tikshta Nasya, that means either uh, with the Shadbindu, then again after the condition is somewhat controlled, then we can go for the Vata Pitta Chigilsa, that is the Murtha Taila, that means the Shirodhara and some uh, conditions we are advising the vasti also that is the lekhana vasti also that we are advising so the vata kapha chigilsa start uh, the the condition which will be starting as the vata kapha management first and which is leading to the vata pitta and the tridoshahara which is accompanied by the rasayana chigilsa is the line of approach thank you sir so the next question is, which Gandusha and Karnapurana oil in Pradimarsha Matra can we use for Dhinacharya for your ear health? Ear health, that is usually uh, the Trifala and uh, Mairijam. It is enough. That means Trifala Churna and uh, is half uh, teaspoon, around it, uh, 15 grams of Trifala, uh, which should be boiled in two cup of water and add around five Myrija to eat with the, along with the, some sort of Sainthava. So this Myrija and the Sainthava that will clear the mucous membrane and the Trifala is somewhat of Ruksha in nature. So it will uh, reduce the chance of eustachian tube blockage. That means everyone having some sort of uh, uh, upper respiratory uh, problems so that will not be creating and that will be progression progress to the eustachian tube blockage when we are adopting the gandusha trifala actually in medicine we are advising the trigadu and the Sainthava. and as a karnapurana usually we are advising not uh, uh, usually advising as the karnapurana just advise them to mop the ear with the buds with the Kshara So that will reduce the chance of excessive desquamation of the skin. That means it will reduce the chance of developing the Zeboric Dermatitis or Eczematous Dermatitis and it will reduce the accumulation of the wax also. And some that means that we are applying the medicine that will reduce the chance of fungal growth also. But not we are usually advising for the Karna Purana but only for the mopping. So for ear pain also, you were talking about Gandusha. So for that also, can we use Tribala plus Maricha? 
no no in uh, karna purana i mean so the gandusha in karna shula in that condition if it is of kevala vataja origin then it is mentioned as the taila gandusha dharana that's as a prop, uh, use of taila gandusha dharana is the hanugraham karna shula everything so we can advise simple use of taila or we can advise in some cases as a readily available medicine we are advising the uh, uh, that uh, uh, which is mentioned in the mukharoga uh, taila uh, i think dashamula taila that also we are uh, advising and airimedadi tailam airimedadi tailam also that is is readily, readily available then we are advising the patient for the sneha gandusha dharana in case of ear pain and which should be continued by the trifala kashaya for as a part of washing it out the oil content okay. thank you sir so the next question is a patient age 75 years is a regular swimmer since 50 years so he is having gradual hearing loss on examination there were no signs and symptoms of infection after karnapurana the condition worsened please guide what to do definitely this is the patient is a swimmer so there is a if a swimmer that means uh, the uh, eustachian tube is in problem no doubt so uh, some part of the water is also entering to the mouth is in a swimmer then there may be in means uh, uh, so the nasal area will be infected so the nasa if the water is continuously entering to the nose or the nose is continuously exposed to the water then there will be definitely there will be a nasopharyngeal edema so this nasopharyngeal edema will definitely leads to the eustachian tube obstruction so in that condition we have to advise the method methods of eustachian tube uh, uh, functioning don't go for the karnapurana so i i, I think uh, in this condition the we can advise for an audiometry or that medicine the, so the typical uh, uh, that uh, diagnostic method is the impedance audiometry so if you are advising the impedance audiometry then there will be a b type b tympanogram that means eustachian tube dysfunction so in a eustachian tube dysfunction don't use any type of oil just advise to use the gandusha pradimarshanasya and the swetha kriya don't apply the thai. that may be the reason the condition is worsened thank you sir so the next question is please explain treatment protocol of karnanada actually the karnanada there's actually susrada mentioned that karnashulam pranadesha badite kshadeyore bi chadurnam abi roganam samanyam so it is a normal symbol that means the karnanada badiriya and the karnashula according to the susruta it is is of vataja in origin so in karnanada we have to consider it is a vataja in origin but we have to give the uh, importance of sthaniga dosha here the sthaniga dosha is the kapha so either we can directly go for the ബ്രഹ്മണ ക്രിയ ഓർ വാദശമന ക്രിയ ഓർ തൈല മീൻസ് ശിരോധാര ഓർ മൂർധ തൈല ബട്ട് ഇഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു വേഴ്സൺ ഇഫ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹാവിങ് സം സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് സൈനുസൈറ്റിസ് ഓർ സം സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് നേസൽ ക്രോണിക് നേസൽ ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻസ് ദെൻ ദിസ് ബ്രഹ്മണ ക്രിയ ഈസ് ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി വേഴ്സൺ ദി ദാറ്റ് കണ്ടീഷൻ സോ എവറി വൺ വിൽ ബി ഹാവിങ് സം സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് സൈനസ് ഇഷ്യൂസ് സോ ദർ ഈസ് നോ ഹാം to start with the lenkhana kriya before starting the brahmana kriya so in a karnanada also this line of management is good just go for it shiro lepana with dhanyamala and trifala churna or that is nagradi churna with dhanyamala for a minimum 5 days and the uh, advise some tikshna nasya initially then go for that means if the patient is having some sort of aggravation of the symptoms don't worry then again uh, go for the Uh, she, that is murtha daila the murtha daila marshanasya marshanasya here we can adopt with varnadik shirakrita varnadik shirakrita actually it is mentioned in the vadika shirashila and it is definitely it is vada pittaja in uh, management it is action vada pittahara in action so here in karna uh, nada we have to give emphasis to the vada pitta and the medicines which is uh, mentioned for the vada pitta shamana so it is uh, the kshirabala is a very wonderful medicine that we can go for the uh, shirodhara or that means uh, 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 shirovasti that can be given with that and if it is not at all responding with this line of management i think leshana rasaya is the best one 
so we can go for the lesioner assign actually the lesioner is the agri aushada of vata and in some conditions in the uh, our ipd the, the we have not not result with any of the treatment then we have switched that patient to the lesioner assign that will be a wonderful one thank you sir so the next question is what can be the management of karnamula shodha Actually, the Karna Mula Shoda is mentioned in Jara Dhigara. That means the Sanni Bada Jara Siyante Karna Mula Sudharana Shofa Samjayate. That is uh, definitely if the patient is having Karna Mula Shofa, that is usually it is mastoiditis. So if a patient is having mastoiditis, then definitely that patient will have the severe fever. So two type of differential diagnosis that we are usually taking for a Karna Mula Shoda, either it may be the mastoiditis or it may be the mumps. That is parotitis. So in both the condition, if there is Karna Mula Shofa, so the no doubt we can go for the Shofa Harajigilsa, no doubt. But the Shofa is of three types that we have already discussed, Ama, Pachimana and Pakko Shofa. So if it is a Pakko Shofa, then the treatment is Bhedana, then we have to refer the patient for the surgery, no doubt. Or if it is Ama or Pachimana Vasta, then the wonderful treatment is the Lebana. We can directly advise the patient for the a lot of labana which is advised in the shofa hara uh, shofa chikilsa that we can do or uh, instantly we can go for the jaloga. There is no doubt as per the pitta in origin for the relief of the pain and the redness we can instantly start the jaloga avajarana and the local application of the medicines which is of pitta hara in origin. And in some conditions, we are giving the Piju, that means Thayaniga, uh, that is local application of the Jatya Ditaila. All that we are giving. So according to the examination only, we have to identify whether it is an Amaja or Pachimana or Pakwa. If it is Pakwa, then definitely there is pus formation is there. Either maybe in the parotid gland or maybe in, in the uh, um, uh, mastoid, there is pus. So as per the Ayurveda, the pus is a shalya. It should be removed. If we are not able to remove, then refer it. Otherwise, it will definitely create or it will create a problem and the patient will go in to develop the fistula. So we have to add means if it, the pachi, this pakkuvrana is not uh, opened, then the Ayurveda also mentioned that it will lead to nalivrana. So if it is ama or pachimana, definitely we can manage it. Otherwise, we have to refer it for the surgery. So why is hearing aid not advisable to a heart patient even in severe hearing loss? Heart patient? Yes, a heart patient. Actually, uh, means uh, that we have already discussed, uh, there is a connection between the heart and ear. Actually, the mainly it is due to the vagus, the vagus stimulation. That means in many conditions, in if we are ex, uh, uh, reading the examination of the ear, it is mentioned that the improper removal of the wax will cause the death of the patient. So it is very uh, horrible, actually, simple instrumentation, which is leading to the heart very the death of the patient. So if you are examining a patient having cardiac history and in any of the patients having a hard wax, don't try to remove it forcefully. That means if we are removing it forcefully, then we are stimulating the vagus nerve. That vagus nerve is a highly parasympathetic to the cardiac muscles and it will go, going to create more problem to the heart. So it is a, means uh, Ajayya mentioned that prakledya dhiman stylena svedena pravilaya shodhed karna vidkam to bishak samyak shalagaya. So Ajayya never emphasized to remove the wax without snehana. So if it is a simple wax also, then don't go for a forceful removal. And in this hearing aid condition, so this is a low, normal procedure that we are advising to our students. What are the care should be taken when we are examining a patient? Take the history of cardiac medicines and cardiac uh, problems, then only examine the patient like that. And uh, make the uh, availability of one base, bystander also means without a bystander, don't examine a cardiac patient for the ear. And he hear the question about the hearing aid. So actually, uh, I'm not very much sure uh, if it is properly adjusted. That means the hearing aid, if it is properly adjusted and a new technique or new generation device, that will not be causing 
so much problem otherwise if the patient having a moderate hearing loss and used a hearing loss and if the patient is exposed to a loud sound then that patient cannot tolerate that much of loud sound and that loud sound will going to create more problem to the ear that may be the reason otherwise uh, i i think there is not so much uh, absolute contraindication for a uh, cardiac patient to use the hearing aid so what are the precautions that we should take while using jaluga in ear how many sittings may be required actually this uh, jaluga is a wonderful medicine that means uh, because uh, the condition which is mentioned that is sheedoshna snigdha ruksha dir no bakshantidi that means if we are adopting the sheeda ruksha ushna uh, that is snigdha whatever we are uh, used for the management if the patient is not responding that means that is an indicative of involvement of the recta so a chronic condition usually most of the chronic conditions there will be the involvement of recta so the safe and uh, local removal of the blood is possible only by the jaluga usually the that the uh, the sitting of jaluga is depending upon the condition so in a case of skin disease it may be required a long term and in case of uh, the conditions like uh, pain pain in the ear due to some hair follicle infection that is furangulosis if the patient is having severe pain then only one sitting is required and in conditions of badhirya badhirya also there is a, uh, the um, jaluga is advised that is means edi supta vivasyata karno rectam hare tadaha if there is any numbness in that area then jaluga is advised so in the case of badhirya or uh, in the condition of uh, the it is uh, eczematous dermatitis then it will require a long term uh, that means frequent jaluga will be advised that means usually we are advising continuous for uh, five days then take a break or otherwise we can advise for alternate for uh, seven days for three sitting like that also we are advising but in a conditions of furangulosis the continuous use of jaluga is not required so what can be done for a 30 year old male patient who have family history of hearing loss in two generations how can we prevent from early stage itself actually the 30 year uh, definitely we have to assess the hearing capacity of that patient using the audiometry so it is the better the annual assessment is very much required and we have to find out why it happened in the family so that may be uh, due to some uh, that uh, senile hearing loss that senile hearing loss means uh, it is usually affecting after a particular type of age so the strength of ayurveda for the prevention of the uh, badhirya is definitely the shiro abhyanga that is murtha daila that means the daily we can use the shiro abhyanga shiro abhyanga uh, is an uh, recommendable uh, medication along with the pradimarshanasya and uh, i mean uh, in, in between we can advise for the karnapurana so the shiro abhyanga pradimarshanasya and karnapurana along with the internal use of rasayana it is recommended but not continuously continuously the patient should go for the shiro abhyanga and the use of pradimarshanasya uh, and the karnapurana that we can advise in an interval but not uh, means uh, actually when the treatment should be advised and started it will depend upon the familial Uh, manifestation of the hearing loss if it is manifesting after the age of 70 then accordingly we can plan it but the normally we are assessing the patient uh, in every year if the patient is having a normal hearing and within 6 months if the patient is at the borderline hearing loss and accordingly we can plan the uh, treatment uh, thank you sir so uh... some of the patient uh, participants have raised their hand so dr ujwala dr ujwala please unmute yourself hello yes please yes. hello Uh, sir uh, uh, because of uh, nowadays uh, uh, people are using too much of uh, earphones and kids also so what we can uh, use as a, a daily basis which uh, karna oil we, we can use 
I think that. I think it is better not to use the earphone continuously. That is a nidana parivarjana chigusa. In the shala kya first part, the first sloga mentioned by Ajayi Susruta, Samkshepadaha Kriya Yogo Nidana Parivarjana. After stating this statement, Ajayi started the treatment. If the uh, conditions which is affecting the sense organs, it is most of the conditions, it is irreversible. So actually, in earphone, uh, means uh, the instrument itself uh, have uh, uh, giving some warning. So don't raise your headphone sound uh, more than the uh, means allowed level. That means a continuous exposure of sound more eight hours, more than 60 decibel. That is going to uh, not 60, around 70. 70 decibel will definitely damage your uh, that uh, nerve, that means cochlea, that will definitely damage. So actually, if necessary only, go for the headphone use, otherwise use in a minimum voice. And as a part of the prevention, uh, we can advise uh, a Rasayana Chikilsa only. That means to, to maintain the health of the nerve, only the Rasayana Chikilsa is advisable. So if the child or the young age, then we can advise the uh, uh, Sayana as a daily use, but I, I think it is not a remedy. Don't take it as a remedy, but in some uh, conditions, if they are as a professional, if they have to use this headphone, then only it is recommended and we can advise the Pratimarsanasya and the Snehana of the Karna. That means the local application. So just before taking bath, advise them to take the, the Sneha in the head as well as the Karna. That means local application of the sneha that is also advisable and uh, let them to check. It is the, let them to check the hearing capacity uh, at an interval of six months. If it is stable, then go for the uh, checkup in one year. So I think in children that is this is not at all recommended. Don't the expose them to the loud noises. <laughs> Sir, which oil we can use uh, for uh, Shirobhanga? Shirabala is okay? No, actually, we are addressing the uh, Asana Villuadi. It is a wonderful medicine. Asana Villuadi. It is a Vadahara as well as it will reduce. Means constant use. Means actually, if we are giving the Shirobhanga, then it should not provoke the Kapha also because it is a kafastana. So the medicines mm -hmm. which is usable, uh, you, very useful for the pradishyaya and karnaroga, it should be recommended for that. She level is not good because she level if it is continuously using, it will provoke the kapha. So, yes, yes. So the asana villuadi is a very wonderful medicine that we can advise. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir and karnanada, uh, what we can use? Karnanada means actually if a patient is having the Karnanada, we should understand that that the patient, if it is recovered from the disease also, there will be the some uh, mental problem will be there. So first start, the Karnanada should be managed with the Snehavana. If it is a severe one, then go for an Acha Snehavana with the Rasna Dashamula Krita, then go for the Kshira Dhumanasya. It is very best. Kshira Duma is Bela Mula Kshira Duma along with the Varanadi Kshira Grudha Nasya or uh, Kshira Bela Nasya, Marsha Nasya. And after that, go for the Murtha Daila. Murtha Daila, usually the Shirodhara uh, with the, the Bela Daila. That is very wonderful medicine. And the Karna Burana with the Eranda Shigradi. This is the first line of treatment. So when the treatment, the Karna Burana, we are going to start, then try to mask the uh, uh, tinnitus. That means if the patient got relief also, then the patient is not able to realize that he is recovered from that condition. So at that time, just tell the patient to uh, make some noisy instrument in his bedroom just like the clock or a low voice radio like that, just to try to mask it. And after the full course of the treatment, then we can advise the patient to remove that masker, so he will be relieved from the uh, tinnitus. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ujwala. Dr. Aishwarya Venugopal, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Dr. Aishwarya, 
ओके वैद्य की माया हेलो सर हेलो 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 यस मैम प्लीज सर ऑफ शारदेला फॉर द वैक्स लाइक फॉर द स्नेयर फॉर द हार्स वैक्स Uh, actually, I think you are asking about the use of Sharada ila in yeah, wax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is definitely. That means a kandu shweda na badiriya pudi karna teru krimin. Everything is advised as the Sharada ila application. So kandu shweda na badiriya. That means if it is there is an itching or if it is due to there is ear blockage. or uh, any type of tinnitus all this can happen with the wax so as uh, this is kshara means it is a kshrana that means it will definitely it will melt the wax so advise the karna poorana don't use as a one or two drop use the kshara dela as a karna poorana and after the karna poorana we can easily remove the wax either by the suction um, uh, instrumentation or by uh, syringe So you have to advise it for one or two days, like you have to. No, max. Actually, we are advising for five days. So okay. after five days means when the patient is filling the external canal with the shara thayla, just ask them to pull the pinna. If they are pulling the pinna with the retention of the oil, then that will allow the wax to move and the thayla will go inside by uh, means uh, uh, giving the softness to the whole wax. Otherwise, the part which is coming in contact with the thayla will be melted. So just move the means actually in karna pura na. I just mentioned that pura the karna then uh, uh, mardana. That means the local uh, uh, application of uh, massage is advised. So just tell the patient to do the peri auricular massage after filling. So that will allow the uh, cartilage to move and it will completely melt the wax. But as it is a ushna thayla, we have to use it cautiously, right, no, sir? Quite ushna thayla, na. No? So it, we have to use it with caution, na, no? like. Yes. No, actually, this uh, karna purna thayla. This is not using for the constant use. Maximum, I think that I have advised five days. It is necessary. So after five days, ask the patient to come and remove the wax. And after removal, then just mop it out. There is no need to go for the. Uh, further advice and in acharya also mentioned that shodhana uh, the rukshado patto khrida mandasya puranam means after the removal if there is any rukshada then advise the patient for using the khrida manda actually khrida manda means vata pitta hara medicine so we can advise the patient to use the uh, erda shigrodi or the billo thaila for a couple of days coming then it is will be uh, completely recovered and it will not create any problem Thank you, Doctor Kimaya. Uh, Doctor Mamta, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Doctor Mamta. Uh, hello. Yes, please. Uh, sir, for how long we should use auchuna uh, in Karnesh Rao? Samundarpi auchuna in Karnesh Rao. Actually, karna churna, that is karna pur, karna srava avachurna. So that means uh, it is advised by the uh, by Ajaya Susruta that is Aragodadi Kashaya avachurna is mentioned. So actually, this avachurna, as we know, it will readily absorb the discharge. So the use of churna in the karna yoga, it is mainly used advised for the complete absorption of the discharge. So here, the after the avachurna, we have to remove it. Don't pu push the churna to the patient's ear and let him to go. Advise the patient to put the churna in the uh, ear and then. Uh, advice to come in the opd and clean it so when the discharge which is completely removed then we can add, up to the complete removal of the discharge we can advise the avachurnana so mainly we are advising the aragodadi kashaya avachurna or surasadi kashaya gana avachurnana that is uh, recommended only up to the complete uh, stoppage of the discharge thank you sir 
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर ममता सो विद दैट वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ द डिस्कशन थैंक यू सर फॉर स्पेंडिंग सम क्वालिटी टाइम विद अस एंड पेशेंटली अटेंडिंग ऑल द क्वेरीज नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर जासूल आलिंगल टू स्पीक अ फ्यू वर्ड्स ओवर टू यू सर थैंक यू actually uh, the ear diseases management uh, uh, we don't get usually in the uh, our academy so that's why we have a lot of questions uh, uh, we have a lot of questions and uh, uh, sir answered that questions very well so uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, these type of uh, uh, questions uh, we didn't get uh, usually in our anva series so uh, so many good questions and uh, sir answered that very well uh, thank you thank you for your uh, wonderful session sir and uh, i invite uh, dr p rahmatullah uh, the chief physician of uh, kotakal ayurveda uh, um, kotakal modern and ayurveda uh, hospital kotakal okay uh, dr rahmatullah sir <laughs> thank you sir thank you dr shanas we can wind up okay thank you doctor so thank you everyone all the participants thank you dr shri kumar sir thank you dr ramatullah sir for being attending with us uh, so with that we come to the end of the session i wish everyone a very happy good night thank you thank you dr shanas uh, if any feedbacks uh, you uh, please ask okay yes if participants want to give any feedbacks or if you are having any inquiries regarding our upcoming sessions yes, that sir. is abha it is an advanced online ayurveda cosmetic product making session and also now we are uh, having a post graduate diploma course in ayurveda nutrition if you are having any queries uh, uh, regarding the uh, today's class uh, you can uh, have your feedbacks in the chat and uh, if you if you need uh, you can uh, if you have any feedbacks uh, you can uh, raise your hand also okay that only for the feedbacks uh, we know that we have so many questions uh, which are uh, there in the uh, q and a session okay any uh, feedbacks from the participants uh, pl please uh, please raise your hands okay yes uh, hello dr manoj hello 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 ah 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 hello hello yes we can hear you are you able to hear sir yes 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 we can hear you yes sir 
सर इट वॉज रियली अ वेरी वंडरफुल सेशन एक्चुअली आई एम फ्रॉम पंचकम हेलो हेलो सर डॉक्टर मनोज हेलो डॉक्टर मनोज हेलो डॉक्टर मनोज मे बी ही हेज सम इश्यूज एनी अदर फीडबैक्स hello yes yeah, sir uh, it was a very nice session and it was so very well elaborated like i think i have uh, it was like first lecture i got to hear about hear disorders with so much of uh, detail uh, and with ayurvedic treatment also which we can easily implement like in our practice so thank you sir uh, for your nice session and thank you for the organization for uh, organizing such nice sessions for us thank you okay thank you thank you dr kimaya for regularly attending all our classes also okay. yes uh, uh hello yes uh, uh we can wind up i think uh, dr manoj has uh Yes, yes, I think he's having some network issues. Yes, yes, yes. okay. Okay, okay. so once okay. again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Jaswal, and thank you all the participants. Okay. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Good night.